So great to have your company for the moments that matter. This round has been a fascinating one in the Hungry Jacks NBL. You can't afford to lose. It's as simple as that. I'm Jack Heverin. Of course, the man that matters the most is Derek Rucker. Ruck, welcome to you. And seven days ago, we were in Sydney. We spoke about the Kings and how ordinary they were. Gee, they bounced back hard today. And didn't they come back exactly how they should have? Now, look, I'm on the hook here because I said if they lost in Adelaide, it was a wrap for their season. Well, I might have to rethink that, Jack, because the way they came out today and convincingly stomped on New Zealand's throat, that's what we were expecting all year. Where has that been? And I thought Coach Moog made some great changes in the way he's been managing games. His decision to go earlier than later with timeouts was noticeable. And I think overall, the Kings looked a lot better and they looked a lot stronger. That was their first convincing win, Jack, I'm going to say in 10 weeks. And that's the question, Ruck. Where has this been all season? Why does it take something like this to see that sort of effort? Desperation. When you're desperate, you'll do crazy things to get success. And we saw it case in point right here at Kudos Bank Arena. Jalen Adams finally came out and was like, I'm one of the best players in the competition. I'm going to go out and perform like that. I'm not waiting around. I'm going to put my imprint on this game right away. 21 first, uh, first half points. And although 21 is significant and beyond normal, it was the way he was trying to press, press, press that should have been the case all along this season. So I'm very happy for him. It's great to see the Kings up and about. And now it, now it really makes this whole top eight, top nine, whatever. The whole league's still in it, realistically. But it's all just alive and kicking at the moment. Uh, okay, so what does it mean for Sydney? What, what do we take away from today? And how do they make sure that it's not just a one-off? Well, the thing that we've been killing them about all year has been their defense. That looked way better today. It definitely is improved. Now, we saw signs of this when they beat Tasmania several weeks ago down in Tassie, but then it fell apart again. So maybe they've uncovered something. Maybe they've unlocked their defensive presence and now can go on and apply this throughout the balance of the season. But look, we understand the pressure cooker of Sydney Kings basketball. It's been that way for decades. It won't change. They're one of the elite franchises in sport in Australia. There comes a lot more with it. But also, when you play well, you get significant confidence hits. You get people patting you on the back and you start to feel <laughs> good about yourself. Here's the chance, Jack, for the Kings to get it right and go on a tear. For the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix, uh, their season is in free for all right now. Nine wins and 12 losses. We spoke about it off the top. You can't afford to be losing right now. And the Phoenix are dropping games, and a lot of them at the wrong time. It's tough. And look, we have empathy for their situation. They don't have any luck. They got no luck. The Queen of Hearts plays for the other team. And I don't know how they turn it around. But I don't have them in my play-in calculations, Jack. I just don't think they're playing well enough. I'm not sure what they're about as a group. Their identity isn't great. They're trying to patch players together. The injuries haven't gone their way. And basically, you know, I think they got to win 80% of the rest of their games to have a chance in the play-in. But if you look at the form, there are far, there are, they might be performing the worst out of everyone right now. I think Adelaide are playing better basketball than them. So the road is rocky ahead. And, and Jack, I just don't think they, they play a role in these final, the final several rounds of the season. So, Ruck, for the next round coming up, they've got Adelaide on Wednesday night at the Heartland at the State Basketball Centre in Knox. And then they travel to New Zealand on Saturday to play the Breakers. If they lose one or, heaven forbid, even both of those games, in your words, is that a wrap? Jack, they've got to get two. I mean, I'm doing the numbers, and I just think they have to get two here. And, you know, for some of these guys, it's, it's what do I do next season? They need to start playing to preserve their opportunities next season because it's just been such a choppy season for the Phoenix. 
and a season that was filled with so much promise coming out of the blitz and even early signs when Allen Sauce Williams returned to the lineup. They went on a nice little run. But since then, injuries, lack of form, poor defensive efficiency, all those things have put them where they are right now. And if you ask me, do I think that they'll get two victories in this upcoming round? I'm going to say no. However, this league's crazy, man. Who can predict what's going to happen in this league? Phoenix very well could go out there, could go out there and get themselves two victories and be right back in the mix. Wouldn't shock me at all. Well, I'm not sure any of us predicted that at this stage of the season, the Brisbane Bullets would be fourth on the table. Now, that's not why. That's why we're not together today because you're at Nissan Arena. Another great win, another polished performance. Wow, look at the Bullets go. I mean, you say polished, and yeah, it was polished, but yet there was still that drama at the end <laughs> where it was like, oh, they're going to let these guys get back in the game and have an opportunity to steal this one from them. But look, Justin Schuler's team has been very consistent defensively all season. They've been in the top four, top four, top five in defensive rating. So you always felt there was a chance for them to make a run late in the season if they could get some offensive impetus. Well, that impetus has come through Nathan Sophie, who is on a tear right now. And Jack, I know um, during the week, last week, we talked on NBL Now about Coach of the Year and other end-of-season awards. Guess who I got ramped back up into my MVP conversation? <laughs> he ain't going to win it, but Nathan Sobey's back in the discussion now based on how he's played the past four weeks and the impact it's had on his team. And then there's other aspects as well. Sam McDaniel's having an outstanding season. They got contributions off the bench from Mitch Norton and Isaac White. Even the move at the start to have Rocco and Aaron Baines out there together was fascinating. But it seems as though Justin Schuler's is at a stage, Derek, where every lever that he pulls, he's getting the right result. And look, he made some mistakes. We talked about it on different platforms about the mistakes he made a few weeks ago even dating back to five weeks ago. But Jack, there's nothing better than a coach that learns quickly. And he has learned quickly from those mistakes. Sam McDaniel, let's talk about him for Defensive Player of the Year. I think it's Will Magnay. But Sam McDaniel has a case to be made. He is so versatile defensively. There are not many guys in this league that can cover point guards, two guards. He can guard all the way up to the four. And when he's on defensively, it's huge for that Bullets lineup. Right now, his individual defensive rating is at, about, as a, is at about league average. But the eye test says that what he does impact-wise for, uh, for the defensive side of the Brisbane Bullets is significant. And I'm not sure there's another perimeter guy out there, Jalen Galloway mm. perhaps. But when you start talking about that award, Jack, I think we got to start talking about Sam McDaniel legitimately. Let's go back to Saturday night, the Cairns Taipans and the Adelaide 36ers. Um, they had no business winning that game, the, uh, the Cairns Taipans. From where they were, they took it to overtime and then dominated the overtime period. That was a fantastic win. Jack, you and, you and I have called a lot of the Taipans games. That was in character for them. You know you're not surprised deep down inside. That's who they are. They can come out and blow you away, give up a lead, and then blow you away again. However, this was significant, though. Being down double digits in the fourth quarter and showing the resolve to dig themselves out of it against a team that I believe is growing in belief. But then in the five-minute overtime period to win by 10 points, that is the most Jekyll and Hyde tight pants things we've seen <laughs> in some time, and it keeps them right in the conversation. They are now, they're a serious playoff threat as well. They've got some big games coming up. If they can play with some consistency and continue to be sharp defensively, like Adam Ford has drilled them and has made one of their trademarks, they, they're at least a play-in team. It's interesting. I remember if you go back to the Blitz, I was talking to Adam Ford, and he told me about a Calder Gack, and he said, I see something in this guy that maybe no one else can see. His length is a problem. We're going to teach him the fundamentals of the game, but he's got raw materials that not many have. We saw it on show last night, 21 and 14. Yeah, well, early in the season, he blitzed Brisbane before 
the chance Taipans went over to America for those NBA games. And they, you know, with Menenga and Warrenberg, the opportunities are really limited as Taipans focus on those New Zealand bigs. But, you know, he's always been there as a possibility. You know, Josh Roberts is another who came in and gave valuable minutes last night. But AK Gat, to get those types of numbers in that type of game, he's someone for the future. And, you know, both of the Gat boys, they're really good. You know, the key for those guys is can they be durable and stay healthy? But a call to Gak, you know, give him credit. He delivered when the Taipans really needed it. Are you ready to trust the, the Taipans yet? Oh, well, I've got to go up there a couple more times this season. <laughs> so just keep everything smooth and say, yeah, I love the Taipans and I trust them 100. That's not like you. Let's go back to Friday night. New Zealand and Melbourne, a fantastic game. Really, really tight one. Went all the way down to the end. We talk about the moments that mattered on this show. This moment here, Matthew Delavadova fouled. It was deemed to be in the act of shooting. He goes to the free throw line and takes care of the game. You've had two days to have a look at it and have a think about it. Was he in the act of shooting? Yeah, that's the correct call given the way that situation is interpreted now. When I was playing, we're probably taking it out on the side if it wasn't in the bonus. But nowadays, you know, the rule change was made or the interpretation was made about eight, nine years ago when that ball's lifted up. You know, no matter what happens after that, the presumption is that a shot was going to be taken. There's no doubt there that Delhi was going to raise up. Smart play by him, veteran move went to the line, and, and, you know, that was a huge game for Melbourne United. Mm. We thought they may have been teetering a little bit. Still, I don't think they're really operating at, at, at the efficiency and the proficiency that Dean Vickerman would be happy with. But, again, they keep up, they keep the Ws coming, and they keep enough, enough of a gap between them and the first Wildcats. Speaking of the Wildcats, uh, I had them last night against Southeast Melbourne. They took care of business. They were in control all night long. On form and what you're seeing, are they the informed team of the competition right now? I said this during the roundtable discussions during the fever break. When me, you, and Lowry sat down and talked about it, I thought that they were playing the best basketball then, and it doesn't change my opinion. It doesn't mean that I think that they can beat Melbourne United in a three- or a five-game series, although they will give them a good run for it. It'll be a great series whether it's in the semis or in the championship series. But Perth are handling their business, and it coincided with the increase in Bryce Cotton's play. The guy has gone to another level. Today in Brisbane, I was with Olgan Ulich, our colleague, and I said, Bryce is going to be the MVP, but I believe he globally, this MVP award is one of the best MVP awards anywhere in any league in the world. You know, the, the separation he has created between himself and the rest of the league, it's hard to find throughout the world. So this MVP is going to be one of the greatest ones ever won in the NBL. That's my belief. I love that. And he was phenomenal last night. His dad was in the crowd. I thought he was going for a 50-piece at one stage. Well, he's starting to get wise, you know. You can't be... 29, 30, 31, 32, forever. And you got to understand when to, you know, take your foot off the pedal a little bit and let the other guys do it and understand at that age, when you start getting into your early 30s and mid 30s, it's all about how many significant points you score as opposed to the aggregate. Let's finish up with thumbs up and thumbs down, as we always do. Who's getting the good stuff from you this week? Thumbs down. I got to give it to the Brisbane Bullets. They really delivered. And, you know, they won two games at home in different fashion, Jack. One game, they shut down the best offensive team in the competition, the Tasmania Jack Jumpers. They limited them to 77, which was an outstanding slog of a playoff victory. And then they come out on Sunday and just ring up the offensive numbers, put a big number up on Illawarra for their second win of the weekend. They're number four in the league. And they get my thumbs up. Can I have two this week? Is that all right? Sure, go for it. Who you got? One's a very quick one. I want to give a big shout out to the Sydney Kings and the Sydney Flames and the Sydney Ownership Group. The pink game today, oh, I couldn't be there, unfortunately, but it was phenomenal. It's a great cause. It's a cause that's very close to the Kings and the Flames, obviously, with Tiana Mungakar here and also Jordan Hunter's mum. 
Uh, it's a cause that's very close to a lot of people here in the NBL. So well done. And I hope it becomes a yearly event. And also want to give a massive thumbs up on a personal note as well to our man, John Casey. 1,000 games of commentary here in the NBL. 35, 36, 37 years. He was the voice of my childhood that became my teenage years, that became my hoops-loving 20s. And now I get to work alongside him. Everyone else has had their say this week. And Case, I just want to say personally and on behalf of the team, congratulations. You are the voice of Australian basketball. You always will be. And you are a star. I second that. And I learned so much from John and Casey, the technical aspects of being a commentator. And, and he's just a true professional and one of the all-time greats in Australian sport. And I think he's happy because the 36ers are winning at the moment as well. So I think that's making you very happy. Two our thumbs down. Where are you landing? I'm shocked that this group of individuals would be in my thumbs down this late in the season. But the Tasmania jack jumpers, wow, that was a really bad weekend. And I expected more from such a well-coached team. Look, they didn't miss by much. But those are two bad losses. And now they find themselves in that playing scenario. And that's a dangerous place to be because, you know, I feel, Jack, that they're like the third best team in the league. Mm. And there are a lot of teams now snipping at them. And I just don't know how this, how this goes for them. Like, when you're not winning games late and you don't look like the same team you were earlier in the year, that's concerning. But, you know, they have a great coach, they have talent, and I think they'll figure it out. But, uh, wow, to drop two is, uh, it was quite shocking. Yeah, they're my thumbs down too, Ruck. The, the thing that I'm seeing with the jack jumpers is in their infancy, they've always been able to find a way and they've had a lot more success than just about any team that's ever come through from a start-up to where they are right now. It just feels to me at the moment, this is the first time where they can't put their finger on what's going on. Well, and you know, say goodbye to being taken lightly. Everybody yeah. realizes now that they are legitimate and, you know, they're, they're playing them like they're a Melbourne United. They want the Jack Jumper scout and that's a different... That's a different realm to be in as a jack jumper. You now must deal with the expectations. You must deal with other teams coming out to get you and throwing their best punch at you, and perhaps that's some of it. But they've got to figure it out. They've got to adjust. They've got to adapt, and they've got to come out better next round. Short turnaround. The round starts on Wednesday with South East Melbourne playing host to Adelaide in Victoria. Ruck, thanks for being with us, and we'll chat to you next week. Always great. Thanks for being with us on the Moments That Matter, of course. Hashtag MBL24 all season long. We're back next week.